to sing. They all they wanted to sing, and Miss Sue said they was she didn't have it down. I thought it was pretty good. Come on, somebody. Aren't you born glad you're born again? The only way is because of Calvary. Amen. Hey, get your Bible real quickly. And um, this is I wasn't gonna preach this till next week, but I said, Lord, I'm getting ahead of myself. I know, and it's like God said, It's my book. You can preach what my book when I tell you to preach it. Amen. And so here, this is supposed to be our next memory verses. And uh, sure, I hope you get these down. I really, really do. And um, this is this is not something that most of you don't know, but there's a reason for it. It's because, again, we want to help people to be boned again. Amen. And uh, they were teasing when we were learning that song because you hear me always say boned again. And they said, preacher, you going you, what you going to think when we say I must uh, glad so glad that I've been boned again? And I said, I'm going to shout, amen. <laughs> Praise God. Real quickly, he, Romans chapter number 10, Romans chapter number 10, the Bible says in verse number 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I just want to talk to you real quickly today about the Bible way of salvation. The Bible way of salvation. Father bless now once again. Help us to get a hold of this great truth. Help us to leave here, dear God, a people who are ready to take and do more to help to spread the gospel throughout this town that you've given to us. I just pray right now that no one will say, well, I can't do that. Yes, we can. If we got saved, all we need to do is get just get a few things down and to help us to be able to share it with others. And Lord, then it's up to them. Remember, we're soul warners and you're the soul winner. So help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible way of salvation. Matter of fact, you need to understand Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, you must be born again. You must be born again. You got to be born again. Uh, growing up, they said you must show enough be born again. And so that, that, that's just that's simple there. We got to be born again. So what basically is God said, you need to be saved. You need to be saved. You need to be, you need, you need, you need to take and be delivered from that, that sinful life and have that one glorious life that God gives to us by way of salvation. Amen. I just want to read a few verses real quickly so you can understand because a lot of people say, is it really true? The Bible says you got to be saved. Well, let me just put it this way. I'm not going to try to take and just tell you. I'm going to take and read a few things to you. Is that okay? How about Acts chapter number 16, if you don't mind? Acts chapter number 16. The Bible says in verse 30, and they brought them out. This is after Paul and Silas been in jail and said, sir, what must I do to be saved? And the Bible says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And then it said, and thy house. And that don't mean you get saved, your house gets saved. That means you get saved by believing on Jesus. Everybody in your house can get saved by believing on Jesus. Anybody around your house can get saved by believing on Jesus. Any co-worker can get saved by believing on Jesus. Amen. So the Bible is teaching us here, you got to be saved. And he said, what do I need to do so I can be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. So God said, I made it real simple. I didn't make it hard. I wanted to make it to where people can do it without having a status in this world, without having money in this world, without having a position in this world. Hey, guess what? All they got to do is do what I told them to do, not from the world, but from my word. Somebody say amen. amen. How about this one? Write it down. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. Acts 4 and verse 12. Neither there salvation, <laughs> salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given by man whereby they must be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus. See, here's what God is saying. You want to be saved? You got to take and understand some things about Jesus. Right. See, so many of us, now watch this here. The majority of us have to admit, when I got saved, I didn't know anything about propitiation. Some of you are saying, I don't know anything about it right now. I didn't understand anything about glorification and justification and all that preservation. I, I didn't understand all of that stuff. But what you did understand is this, is that you need to know who Jesus was and you need to trust Jesus for your salvation. Somebody say amen. amen. <coughs> the Bible says here in Luke 19, verse number 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. 
So God says, guess what? I came to get you so I could save you. Watch this now. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Is it okay if I just use scripture a little bit? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hey, God is saying, stop with all of this here. You got to do this, and you got to do that, and you got to know this, and you got to know that. All you got to know is who you are, a sinner, what you deserve, the sentence of hell, who Jesus Christ is, the Savior, and trust him and him alone. Amen. Yeah. Well, I know some people will say, but preachers, take more than that. Aren't you glad it didn't take more than that for you? When I was a seven-year-old boy, nobody sat me down and, again, explained all of that stuff. All I found out from the preacher, Dr. Way, is that I was a sinner. Hell was going to be my home, but Christ came and died and was buried and rose again for me. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen to this. Are you still with me? Yeah. The Bible says in John 3, 16, 17, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be Praise God. I'm so glad it's all about Jesus. Yeah. It ain't about all of this. It's either going to be by grace, which is come from God, or it's going to be by works, which come from you. So who you think God's going to receive? You or the grace that comes because of Jesus Christ? Yeah. And, of course, our verse that we have today, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So God is trying to get us to understand some simple truth here today. And God wants us to be better people uh, at warning people about what they need to do so they can get saved. You said, preacher, when, when can I use this stuff? Anywhere, anytime. Yes, All you got to do is get a little door open, a little conversation going, and God says, guess what? You can help somebody if they're willing to hear because they got to believe in their heart. Yes, Not you believe in your, come on now. And so God says, so here's what we got to do. Three things real quickly. Are you still with me? Say amen. amen. First of all, write this down. The sinner's problem. The sinner's problem. Now, I'm going to make it simple, but it's not going to be that simple. In other words, here's what God is saying. You got to understand what your problem is. Right. See, a lot of times when we talk to people, folks do this thing called one, two, three, repeat after me. Hey, and understand something here. I understand there is a one step, a second step, a third step. Amen. And then there's the final step of trusting Christ your personal Savior. But I mean, people go through it quick. You know you're a sinner, right? You know you deserve hell, right? You understand that, you, that Christ died for you, right? Then this ask him to save you. You say, preacher, can it be that simple? Well, it could. But here's the thing about it. I found out most people that it's that simple for, somebody else has helped them with what I'm going to share you with. I get somebody else been praying about it. Come on now. And so I just want to help you a little bit, if it's okay, with you just a little bit. First of all, I want you to understand something here. The sinner's problem is that they're dead. People got to understand they're dead. They're just dead. They're dead to the world, uh, to the word, and they're dead to the Lord Jesus. They're just dead. And, and here's the thing about it. The Bible says, uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we understand the wage of the sin is death. And a lot of times what we do is, is we say, that's the second death. Here's what God is saying. You need to understand something here. The second death is because they're already dead. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They're just already dead. Let me just help you a little bit. Here's what the Bible says here. Romans 5 and verse number 12. Are you still with me? Say amen. amen. Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that all have sin. So you know what that means? Everybody was dead. Every, that, in fact, it's, it amazes me how people will say, well, you know what? Uh, I was saved because God chose me. God says, I didn't choose you. You finally chose me. I chose the whole world to be saved. Amen. I want the whole world to be saved. You finally got to a place, and God said, that wasn't even you doing it. That was me working on you doing it. Amen. So the truth of the matter is this. You and I have got to get to a place where we help people to understand that you and I are not alive and can't do this thing on our own. Why? Because they're dead. Write this down, Ephesians 2 and verse number 1. And you have equipped who were dead in trespasses and sin. 
Just dead. Just dead. Now, here's the thing you happen. You go to somebody and you say, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you go to heaven? And people will say, well, I think so. Well, why is that? Because, in fact, I'm not as bad as them. Now, we're going to establish something here. You're not as bad as them. Can I just be honest with you? You dead. And by the way, you want you say you're not as bad as they dead. And the one you read about on TV or see in the news, they You say, preacher, I don't get what you're saying. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Dead is dead is dead. There's no degree of dead. Amen. There's no difference in dead. Dead is just dead. Amen. We come into this world dead. If we don't trust Christ, we leave here dead. You say, preacher, I don't get that. Okay, watch this now. And in the Bible, there's this man named Jairus. He had a daughter. So we know we're not talking about JB. <laughs> she was sick. And you know what? She died. There was, there was a lady, a, a, a widow. She had a son. And, and they were having a funeral for him in Luke chapter 7. And you know what? Uh, he was and then in John chapter number 11, the Bible says that Lazarus was. Now, when they came to sin for Jesus, they, they, he waited four days. And, and then all of a sudden, he decided to go a few days. Then he came, and after a while, she said, you know what? You can't do anything for him. Why? He in the grave, and he stink. Watch this here. The girl had just died, had the fever. Maybe her body was still warm. The boy, he had been died. He was dead. They had him in the casket. And back in those days, maybe it was a day later. Lazarus was dead, and he was there four days in the grave. And you know what the Bible said? They were dead. I don't care if you're dead right away, if you're dead after a day, if you're dead after four days, hey, you just dead. I don't care if you died from a, a fever. I don't care if you died because of something else like the sun. I don't care if you died, but if you're in the grave and stinking, you are dead. You tell me what's the difference between the girl and with Lazarus. They just dead. So when people try to tell you I'm not as bad as so-and-so, you say, preacher, maybe people don't take that argument. Okay, watch this now. Your lady's with me on this one. You can't be a little bit pregnant. You either pregnant or you ain't. <laughs> now, I know some pregnancies get terminated. I understand that. But you either pregnant or you not. And God says the same thing when it comes to being dead. You either dead or you're not. And the Bible said everybody is dead. So you want to know <coughs> what the sinner's problem is? He is dead. But not only that, say, preacher, that's bad enough. He's not just dead. He's desensitized. You say, preacher, I don't get that. Here's what God is saying. Dead people don't feel anything. What do you mean by that, preacher? Dead people, listen to me now. That's the reason why it's got to be a work of the Holy Ghost going on around here. God is saying dead people, they, they, the, the girl, she didn't feel anything until she rose up. The boy, he didn't feel anything till he rose up. Lazarus, he didn't feel anything till he came out. Why? Because when you're dead, you are desensitized. So a lot of us get upset with people and start saying, I don't know why they don't get it. They're dead and they have no feelings. They're not trying. Come on, help me now. What happens is all of a sudden, somehow, some way, the Holy Ghost starts getting to working in their life, and they start seeing a need. But the truth of the matter is this. They many times don't know what they need, so it takes you and I to tell them what their needs are. Amen. Amen. Okay, just so you can get a hold of this. You still with me? How many of you in here have, uh, I'll put it this way. I think most, I'll be okay with this one. How many of you have a great-grandmother that's dead? Not the grandmother. I said great grandmother. Okay, good, right. So just to let you know how dead people are desensitized. I don't know what your great grandmother liked. But I don't care what she liked. Maybe she liked cookouts. So you take that brother Jason, you take that, that great, what you call it, a, a Traeger, or what, what is it, uh, whatever that grill is. You take it down there to great grandma's grave site. You put the best meat on there that you can. 
You get the mesquite going or whatever kind of a, a, a fragrance you want going. And you take and turn it over and you stay down there for an hour or two. I got some news for you. Grandma don't smell a thing. Hey man, why? Because there's no feelings there. And we don't understand that. That's why we got to really help people because you there's no feelings there. Hey, by the way, you take grandma. Maybe, maybe, maybe grandma was a Christian. I don't know. But let me tell you something here. You could take and go down there with grandma who said you don't go to the movies and you don't go listen to this music and you don't go do that. And you take that movie down there, grandma was again. And you take that music down there, grandma was again. And you take that lifestyle down there, grandma was again. Grandma ain't going to rise up and say, you ought to stop that. And you can even take the music she wants, and you can take the movies that she wants, and she's not going to say, boy, I've been waiting for some of that to show up. Why? Because dead people are dead. They're desensitized. They have no feelings. My wife and I talk a lot about it. There's people today that just have no feelings about what God wants to do in their lives. Hey, watch this now. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covenant, mal maliciousness, evil, a full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignant, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, whom knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They are dead and desensitized. And God says we need to understand. But even worse than that, the sin is problem. Not only is he dead, not only is he desensitized, but he's destined. Last week we talked about hell, but I want you to understand what he's really destined for. The wrath of God. God says, you and I got to get serious about this. Right. These are dead people, desensitized, and destined for the wrath of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteous of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The Bible says in Romans 2, verse 4 through 6, Or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance, longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Now listen here now. But after that, they hardness and impotent hearts, treasures up unto themselves wrath against the day of wrath and reveal it the, the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. You know the reason why you and I need to help people? I know you and I say, wait a minute, they're going to hell. No, listen, they need to realize they get ready to face the wrath of God. I don't want anybody to have to face the wrath of God. I need you to understand something here, that God loves us. And God said the only way for people not have to deal with that wrath is to come through Jesus. Listen to this verse, Romans 5 and 8. You know the verses. Romans 5, 8, and 9. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Sinners got a problem. And God said, if you're going to help somebody to be saved, if you don't help them understand they got a problem, this one, two, three, repeat after me stuff may make it even worse. Come on, help me, somebody. I'm not trying to say that you're going to be able to have to say everything that you know from the Bible. You ain't got to preach Genesis 1, 1, Revelation 22, 21. But you and I have to help people understand that if you're going to get saved, the Bible way is saying, knowing you are a sinner. And we don't help people understand. Matter of fact, people say, I don't like to talk about sin. Well, how are you going to help people to get saved? If they don't know that they're sinners. Yeah. Number two, write this down. The Savior's provisions. Remember over there in Genesis 22 when the son Isaac actually said, he said, I see the fire and I see the wood. He said, where the lamb? He said, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. John said it in John 1, 29. Behold the lamb of God. 
You want to know what the, what, what, who Jesus is? He's the provision that God has given to us, the man to be saved. Listen to what the Bible said. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. So here's what God is trying to get you and I to understand. That God says we are sinners and our only hope is what he's provided to us through the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Write a couple things down. I'm just going to I'm gonna be done here in just a second real quickly. First of all, write this down here. You and I need to understand what did God provide for us? He provided someone who died voluntarily for us. Right. Right. Voluntarily he died for us. Amen. The Bible says in John 10, verse 17 through 18, here's why, this is what we got to tell them this, why? Because we don't want people to think that they can do it, that they did something. It's not what you do, it's all what he's done, amen. And what did he do? He died voluntarily for us. The Bible says in John 10, verse 17, 18, therefore does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again this commandment have I received of my father and greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for a friend somebody say amen, amen. see here's what God is saying we got to get people to understand something you don't save yourself you get saved through the voluntary death of Jesus Christ amen. He did it because he wanted to, not because he was made to, not because he had to. He wanted to do it for you and I. He's not willing that any should perish. But I want you to understand something. It wasn't just a voluntary death. It was a vicious death. I said it was a vicious death. See, I don't think people understand, again, and this is one of the reasons why I think salvation has become such a cheap thing to people. Because we don't understand the viciousness of what he had to go through. It was so vicious that the Bible said he couldn't even be recognized. They slapped him. They spit on him. They took and speared him. They did everything. They scourged him with the cat and nine tail. And here's what God is saying. You and I, even those of us who say we understand what he's done, don't appreciate all what he had to go through so you and I wouldn't have to go through it. It wasn't just a little simple old death. Hey, let's take him down there and let's just make fun of him. And then let's take him down after he died from starvation. No, they crucified him. I mean, he had the nails in his hand and the nails in his feet and the spear was in his side. Thank God, even though it was vicious, he did it for me. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chest top of my peace was upon him and by his Stripes, I say stripes, we are healed. God said our problem today is this, is we don't realize the provision that's been made for us. And it wasn't just that Jesus just died, but the Bible said, but God commended his love toward us. The Bible said God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God said too many of us have taken it for granted. It was a voluntary death. It was a vicious death, but it's a vicarious death. You say, what's that? He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Somebody say amen. amen. God is saying, I'm trying to get you to understand something. That what Jesus Christ did, he did it because he didn't want us to die and go to a burning hell. And not only was it a voluntary death and a vicious death and a vicarious death, but when you get the gospel, you got to always talk about the victorious resurrection. Whew. Without the resurrection, we all still be in trouble. Without the resurrection, we have no hope. Without the resurrection, how can we say, one day I'm going to get up. If Christ did not raise up, how can we talk about us getting up? But thank God, three days later, up from the grave, he arose and he lived. He lived. Christ Jesus lives today. Amen. Thank God for the resurrection. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Listen to me. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Don't leave the resurrection out of the gospel. 
That's the thing that makes a difference. There's a lot of people say, I'm die, I would, I'll be willing to die for you. And I believe it. People will die for me. I'd die for my wife. I guarantee you that. But one thing I can tell you I can't do, I can't get up for. Hey Amen. I can't get up for. And I thank God he got up for all of us. Somebody say amen. amen. So we see the sinner's problem. We see the Savior's provision. But here's where the rubber meets the road. You say, preach all of that was good stuff. Oh, it's even better than me. We see the scripture's promise. Amen. The scripture's promise. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Can I just help you a little bit here? There's a lot of people who will say, you know what, you guys are sending folks to hell. How could that be? When the Bible says, and they ask the question, sir, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. In other words, all you can do and all you have to do is believe. What does hinder me from being baptized? Acts chapter number eight. You need to believe that on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God. Here's what, here's, what, here's what some people need to understand. And by the way, you need to realize what measure you meet, you'll be measured back to you. In other words, God is basically trying to teach you and I. It's real simple. What is that? It takes, first of all, an individual commitment. Could I share something with you, soul winners? Stop worrying about what others say. Just do what God tells us to do. Share the gospel. And then try to get other people to understand it's an individual commitment. We almost act like we're trying to get people to commit to us. Or commit to the church. Or commit to some other entity or something that's out there. Listen to what the Bible said. Are you with me? That if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou it's an individual commitment. What do you mean by that, preacher? See, it's not a matter of what you think. It's what God knows about me. Amen. Remember, we like to say it this. God don't look at the outward. God looks at the heart. How are you so good at looking and examining the heart? It's an individual commitment. I know some people say, well, they don't show any sign. Well, guess what? That's not up to me. I understand about bringing forth, I understand all that. But what some of us do, if they don't meet our standard, we're basically ready to throw it away. How about you and I just thank God that we met his standard? Yeah. I confess with my mouth that I believe Christ was died and was raised from the grave. And now God promised me that I will be saved. Somebody say amen. amen. So it's an individual commitment. And watch this now. It's an internal conviction. Can I ask you a question? How many of you know what others' real conviction is if they never say anything to you? I don't know what your convictions are if you don't say anything to me. Here's what we want to do. We probably say, I don't believe they, they meant it. Okay, let me just cut. Are we still Okay. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, so somebody says something, and shall believe in thine, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I believe he died for me, a sinner. He was buried. He rose again. And I'm going to trust him the best way I know how to save me and take me to heaven. Watch this. You really mean that? Did you really mean it? Did, 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 you, did you really mean that you believe that Jesus died? There ain't nothing wrong with asking. But some of us, we ask because we, here's what we're saying. I don't know if you really meant it. Did you really mean it? See, our biggest problem today is this here. Is that not only is it an individual commitment, but it's an internal conviction. Guess what God said? <coughs> here's the thing about it. There's a whole lot of people can say stuff to you in their, from their mouth because it's in their head. Let me say it again. They can say it from their mouth because it's in their head. But God says it's something you got to believe in your heart. 
And the only one knows the heart is God. Amen. The only one knows if it's true in the heart is God. So you and I need to stop trying to be soul examiners and start thanking God for letting us be soul warners. Amen. But just so you don't think that I'm here some uh, uh, easy believism, I think what the Bible teaches us is not only is it an individual commitment and internal conviction, but it's an identical confession. Identical confession. What do you mean by that, preacher? Remember, if thou shalt believe in thy heart, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you know what that means? Watch this, Miss Jamie. God said, I'll be saved. So you know what that means? I must have been lost. So an identical confession. So you understand something here. A lot of times people say, yeah, 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 because they just want to shut you up. But that's what, until they realize this, yeah, 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 I am a sinner. You can shut me up all you want to, but you haven't shut God down. So identical confession, I, I need to be saved because I'm a sinner and I'm lost. I'm dead, I'm desensitized, and I'm destined for the wrath of God. And I don't want that in my life. Then God said, next thing you need to do, this identical confession, is that your only hope is through the Savior, Jesus Christ, who did die, who was buried, and who did get raised up from the grave. Not because of the fact that we wanted him to, but God gave him the power to, amen. And watch this now. Identical confession. Thou shalt be saved. If you get to the end of trying to lead somebody to Christ, and you say, you don't understand that God said he saved you, and they say something like this, I hope so, start over. Start over. Because what you want them to do is understand God made a promise, the scripture's promise. Thou shalt be saved. You say, preacher, are you trying to convince them? No. I'm trying to keep them from having this anxiety as they go through life. Because the devil wants to, to take and get a hold of them when you're not around and say, see, you really didn't mean that. Well, let me tell you, the best I, I knew how, I meant what I said, and I understand I'm not perfect, but I'm not dependent upon me, the imperfect one. I'm trusting him, the perfect one. And he said that if I confess, and if I believe, he said in Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead, I would be saved, shall be saved. No doubt about it. Take it to the bank. Fairly, fairly, truly, truly. Salvation is mine, and heaven is my home. Amen. You want to help people get saved? You want to help people enjoy their salvation? Then teach them these simple truths. You say, preacher, that took a little while. I know. That's our biggest problem. And that's one of the reasons why we have so much problem with one, two, three. Repeat after me. People need to understand their problem. They need to understand what was provided. And they need to understand what the promise is. God said they shall be saved. But let me tell you how it is. The difference between a head salvation and a heart salvation. God says, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. God says you got to receive it. Again, you got to confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. And by the way, it's not because of the blood, not because of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but it's all because God says, that's the real deal. That's the real deal. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Oh, I'm only saying it because it's real. It's real in my soul. Somebody say amen. You want to help somebody to be saved? Stop making it hard. Aren't you glad it wasn't made hard on you? Amen. By the way, I'll say it again, Ms. Jamie. A little seven-year-old boy sitting at 14th and Madison, Maywood, Illinois, Rock of Asia Missionary Baptist Church. The pastor sat me down, and he told me I was a sinner. He told me I deserved hell. He told me Christ died for me and was buried and rose again. And he told me that verse 13, whosoever shall call 
Trust, depend, and rely. Which if we call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. I believed even at the little boy. I got smart now, though. Brother Coney, watch this now. I can tell you a little bit about propitiation. I may not be able to always pronounce it when I get to the word, but I know what it means. I understand a little bit about justification. I've watched preservation and, 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 and glorification. I've learned some of that stuff. Brother Scott, I didn't know a thing about it when I got saved. And stop you listening to people that are saying, there ain't no way they can be. They don't, they don't know enough. You didn't give them enough scripture. Why aren't you glad you didn't have to learn the Bible from front to back before you got saved? Amen. Father, thank you so much for the great truth of your word. Help us today to be willing to go out and help somebody. Help somebody understand the great truth. How can they call upon whom they not believe? How can